like I said, let me go that one. If you're doing most of the most common wiring methods you're going to be encountering is called EMT. You're looking at it around you here. There's a big, uh, what looks like two inch conduit full of conductors. That's what you're going to be using for probably 80 to 90% of the time with MC cable will put you up to 90% of your wiring methods for a lot of applications. So let's talk a little bit, guys, like I said about these wiring methods. Um, select the proper raceways or cables that go down to the either raceway or cable that we're going to be using. Oops, there you go. Let me get my uh, pointer here. So um, we're going to have a raceway or a cable. And I told you guys between MC cable and EMT conduit, you're covered to how much? 90% of the time. That's all what you need to do. Um, installation requirement for raceways or cable. How do you install them? We'll talk about the installation for these cables. Um, select the proper raceway size. I'm not going to size raceway, guys, because we sized the atom, right? We did sizing last uh, last project. We did a lot of sizing for conduits. So it's uh, um, we, we, we're going to touch on it, but we, we already did that uh, based on how many conductors. Metric designators, all of them already have metric designators at the end of their sizes. Um, with conduit comes um, uh, outlet boxes, guys, and pull boxes and junction boxes and what's not. You're looking at a couple of device and junction boxes like here. You put the right fittings and you can make this box a junction box or a device box with the right fitting. So you bring your conduit into a box. That box can be your junction box right above the ceiling, can be your device box. If you put the right fitting on it and you stick a device into it, it becomes a receptacle or a switch box or what's not. Size of box. We did box fill calculation, guys. Um, this this chapter again talks about box fill calculation. So please go ahead, Adam, there and do that. When you guys do the the uh, the, um, the questions at the end, do a couple of box fill calculation. That probably will be the last time we touch on box fill calculation. Um, though, um, and uh, depending on the orientation, box fill calculation and what's not, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, this is just telling you guys the designator that in the NEC code book, we get the metric designator for all the inch size conduits. Um, so we'll go into that one. So the, I'm going to talk a little bit about the rigid guys. Like I said, I have a... Um, the most common two conduit conduits you're going to be using is M. The, the most common conduit you're going to be using is MC, uh, is the EMT conduit. Rigid. Here's you're looking at the rigid threaded like this one. This rigid threaded you use, use it typically if you have hazardous location. Uh, you use it for has for physical protection. So I can't emphasize rigid metal conduit. You're looking at it right here, typically threaded. Adam, you guys thread these in the field. They come from half an inch all the way to six inches. You can thread them in the field, and you only use them. You only use them if you have physical protection or has maximum physical protection. You have heavy walls. If you look at them, they're heavy. They can be threaded. Um, so that's the only application for them. They use them a lot, guys, for wherever you have a physical protection, like in hazardous location, glass one, div one, places where you can run a car into a cable, into a feeder. Um, rigid mill conduit is maximum physical protection for all your conductors. Um, they're threaded. You can use them threaded. If you thread them in the field, of course, you have to, you have to uh, protect them from corrosion. Um, uh, bends. You can bend them in the field. These conduits guys can be bent in the field, or you can have electric. There are the three types of benders for the most part. Hand benders. Um, Karen, you guys did it with us in six quarter. You bend them by hand, up to size size uh, three quarter of an inch if it's rigid. Um, and then you can have uh, electronic uh, electrical benders and hydraulic benders. Hydraulic benders can bend as as high as six inches of these of these conduits. So can I just get you one little thing, please? This conduit, you shall not specify this conduit for your project except if you have maximum or severe physical protection for conductors. Severe is not Chad kicking the conduit with his foot. That's not severe. As severe is Chad's car driving right into that feeder. That's your physical protection. Everybody understand that one? Because EMT conduit, um, Derek, if you're mad, can you bust this EMT conduit with your hand or your foot? Or your head, maybe? No? 
So these are also give physical protection. This is severe physical protection. That's a car driving into it. Literally, if you put it in a wall, you, your chances of you bust the wall before this, some of these bend. So that's, everybody understand the gravity of the rigid metal conduit. That's why we thread them. Um, here's the hand benders that you can use. I believe these, we can use them up to a three quarter of an inch rigid, rigid metal conduit. And EMT, we use them also for EMT. Oh boy, um, I wanna say uh, two, definitely two inch EMT conduits. And you can bend them by hand. And if you guys are electricians, we will take you, the ones who are electricians, we you guys bend them with us in the, in the lab. So. Um, so, any comments, any questions about rigid? Rigid metal conduit, it's threaded, it's thick, used only for maximum physical protection, a car driving into it or in a hazardous explosion location, gases and what's not. Um, they come from half an inch all the way to six inches. We use them typically for services, guys. If your service is outside by a parking lot, we'd like to put rigid into them so it can protect the service conductors and or the feeders coming in. Okay, now the smarter, now the second conduit, the most common conduit that we use is EMT conduit. So there are a few people who are smarter than Chad. They said, okay, here you go. What if we can find a conduit thickness and thickness somewhere between the EMT conduit and the rigid? Can you guys see that? So they came up something between the rigid, the thick, thick one, and the EMT conduit, which is thin. So then they came up with something called IMC, which is, um, the thickness is somewhere between EMT and uh, and rigid. So for for application that that does not need need more protection than EMT, but less protection than rigid. These these ones, guys, the same thing. They're in the code. They're treated like rigid. They can be threaded uh, or non-threaded fittings. That's a nice thing about them. You can thread them. You can use threaded fittings with them with EMT or non-threaded fittings, like like exactly like EMT conduit. Okay, any comments, guys? Any comments about rigid and intermediate? You use rigid and intermediate for two locations um, in hazardous location, as well as if you need severe physical protection for your conductors. Can I guess get you to understand that one? Otherwise, never ever specify rigid. Why? It's, it's heavy, it's expensive, um, hard to work with threaded so unless you need the phys severe physical protection that conduit is out the window did you guys hear me brian so what's your conduit of choice emt we love it easy to work with easy to bend cheaper uh it provides uh physical protection for conductor right you can bust your head against that conduit as many times as you want it's not going to bust it uh but it's not severe physical protection can you just see the difference between physical protection versus severe physical protection Okay, EMT conduit, the conduit of choice. So Karen, you're gonna be using this baby 90% of the time in your project. Every time you walk into a commercial building, guys, office building, um, even industrial buildings for the most part, other than the manufacturing floor, um, you're gonna be dealing with some type of an EMT conduit, some type of an EMT conduit. They are thin wall metal raceways. Um, they cannot be threaded. You don't thread them. They have couplings and connectors that comes with them. They are used for branch circuits and feeders and what's not. Mostly in the commercial buildings, in office building and what's not. Um, all their fittings and couplings and connectors, guys, are non-threaded, easy to work with, easy to bend by hand, cheaper to buy, easy to pull conductor in, uh, lighter in weight. All these are advantages of EMT conduit. And at the same time, Derek, it provides protection for your conductors. Look at them, they're, they're protected versus putting them in that rigid thick one. So they come guys in sizes of half an inch all the way to four inches. They can't go higher than four inches. That's kind of a disadvantage. Okay, can, I, can you guys give me a thumbs up, Chad? When we specify wiring methods for any commercial industrial project, we're going to be dealing with EMT conduit unless we have physical, severe physical protection, then we will switch into what? Into rigid. That's all what you need to do. They all come in sections of 10 foot, guys. Um, EMT conduit is not threaded, so you, don't, you can't thread EMT conduit by code. Uh, so you can uh, you can bend it there. Uh, 
There are three kinds of benders for EMT conduit. The same thing for rigid guys. You can bend it by hand, hand benders, or you can bend the electrical electrical benders. You guys, uh, Karen, did you guys use the electrical benders in Steve's lab? Electrical benders, you put them in, and I think it was uh, was it up to two or four inches. I can't remember. Four inches, the one that we do there. I think it's four inches. Then you have hydraulic, which can get you all the way up to six inches. Yes, you can bend six inches hydraulic. Uh, bends. Most of the people, when it comes to rigid, Brian, they use um, pre-manufactured bends because it's expensive to bend rigid um, and hard. So they, if they want a couple of bends, they do them in the factory and they pre-assemble them. Um, uh, they ship them and they assemble them in the field. Okay. Installation of metal conduits. For the most part, guys, um, conduits need to be supported every generous speaking every three feet from a box you need to support the conduit all these conduits and every 10 feet uh, every 10 feet intervals for the most part that's kind of the support method one more time your conduit of choice is right here um all these two only if you have physical severe severe physical protection that you need these. severe physical protection that you need these two conduits any comments any questions I want to bring to attention, Karen, that these are metallic conduit, which means they all qualify as an equipment grounding conductor. So, Brian, do I need an equipment grounding conductor when I pull these with these wires? No. Is it a good idea to put an equipment grounding conductor, especially for feeders? Yes. Did you guys hear me? For brand circuits? No, but for feeders, it's a good idea design-wise to pull an equipment grounding conductor inside the conduit more reliable, better equipment on a conductor, uh, but you don't need to though, by code. The shell, because it's metal, that metal thing, that steel or aluminum, will act as your equipment on a conductor if you have a ground fault. If you have a ground fault. So that's your, um, your conduit. <clears throat> EMT, um, if you were to use EMT, guys, since it's the conduit of choice, can I use EMT in a dry or wet location? Yes. You can use it typically indoor. Can I use it outdoor in a wet location? Yes. When you use it there, they have rain tight um, and draining issues. You have to put some draining in the conduit so it doesn't drain. It doesn't collect the water and dump it right to the top of your equipment. Guys, you have to drain the, to design the system and have drainage into them um, in order not to collect the water and dump it right above your equipment. Um, so that's that's very important too when it comes to equipment for services as well as for uh, conductors, outdoor conductors, feeders, and branch circuits. <clears throat> uh, you're required to do seals, guys. Every time you come from outside to the inside, you have to have a duct seal. The reason for this, uh, Karen, is because of different temperature inside, outside, and condensation and what's not. So you have to provide, a, every time you bring a, a, a feeder from outside to inside, a conduit, you have to seal it. Um, if you're coming for also from underground, you have to seal. Coming from underground, you have to seal I, I, at either ends of that feeder. So that's your sealing. Uh, moisture or scale. We have we have typically for the moisture, but if you're in a hazardous location, we seal because we don't want to the gas to escape from one location to another. We do have a chapter about hazardous location, guys, uh, and we'll do the seal for hazardous location. The seal that you use shall not deteriorate or damage your conduit or your conductors, right? You don't want to put a seal, guys, inside your conduit that will damage the insulation of your conductor. You defeat the purpose. So they talk about the seal have to be identified uh, for the cables and the shield, if any. Um, and they typically call them the duct seal that they use. It's seal, environmental seal, so it doesn't allow the moisture to accumulate because of different temperature between different locations connected by a conduit. So when you become a project manager, Derek, the first thing you need to do, you have a conduit poked outdoor, you have to have some type of a seal as you enter, as you enter that building. Um, okay, so we have rigid, they call them non-flexible conduits. You're looking at it, Karen, here. This is called non-flexible conduits. EMT is one of them, rigid, intermediate. Then they have something called flexible conduit, right? Flexible conduits and connector are like these guys. These are meant to not to be a full wiring methods, though you can. They're meant to connect to equipment and 
to, to connect to electrical equipment. Did you guys hear me? This, these are flexibility. They give you flexibility. They're meant to go to, from a junction box into the equipment. Two, they, they do two reasons, guys. They allow the equipment, allow you to maneuver the equipment and move them, number one, and they allow the vibration. When this vibra the equipment is vibrate, it would not translate the vibrate into, into the, the building. Imagine having a conduit like this guy tied to a machine that vibrates. What's going to happen when the machine vibrates? That whole vibration is going right through every single room. And imagine sitting in your office and things are shaking around. So it's a, to absorb the vibration, and for ease of installation and maintaining, especially for things that moves, they use flexible to tie to equipment. So every time, remember, every time you have a machine, a motor, an air handling unit, almost always, guys, what they do is they come up with a box like this. EMT conduit is coming right at the top. From the bottom here, they take a flex and they tie it to the machine. And here comes up, Chad, when we use these. Everybody. So where are we going to be using these flex tying to equipment? That's that typical application for it. <clears throat> Um, simplify installation and vibration. So that's, there are a few of them guys, flexible metallic conduit, liquid tight flexible metallic conduit, um, and liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit, something like this. So um, Adam, if it's flexible metallic conduit, you can use it in a dry location, exactly like where we're sitting right here. If it's liquid tight, can anybody tell me where would you use a liquid tight? In a wet location, outdoor, uh, any place where it's wet location. Um, so this piece that you guys are looking at, here, this is flexible, used indoor, um, in a dry location. The other two will be used outside location. Uh, here's your flexible metallic conduit, liquid tight, flexible uh, metallic and liquid tight. None. These are, the term for them is wet. These are wet, these are dry, same application. So when you become an inspector, non-inspector project manager, Adam, and you go to the field, and here's an air handling unit on the roof, and it's they're tying it with a flexible metallic conduit on the roof. Before the inspector shows up, you probably maybe you should bring it to attention of the installer. Say, this is not approved to be in a wet location. See why you, you guys are not electricians, or you can't be the ones who want if you want to but your designers our job will be a project managers we're going to watch our project before the inspector shows up critique critique it before our inspector shows up that's what, what our job is to do okay any question guys about flexible metallic liquid tight every time you see liquid tight flexible metallic or non-metallic these are for what location any question about these guys Typically, they use them in length of six feet, typically six feet, six to three feet, and they tie them to the equipment and they allow them, they allow flexibility. Can I use them as a wire method? Yeah, bring it on. Design wire method? Yes, bad idea. <laughs> there is a much better wiring method than this. Okay. Any comments, guys, about these wiring methods? Any comment, please? So, especially the ones who have not gone through our electrical program. Brian, you know it. Derek, my friend, does it make sense? Okay, that's good. So these are the wiring methods that you need. Okay, flexible metallic conduit. Um, this guy, I want to show you guys. Here's a flexible metallic conduit, and here is um, here's this guy uh, happened to be an MC cable. Can you guys see they look alike? What's the difference between them, Brian? One of them has conductors inside it, and the other one do does not. So here's a flexible metallic conduit. Here's MC cable or AC cable. They look exactly the same. The only difference is ones come with wires inside them. This is a conduit. This is a cable. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 they look alike when you do them, except this, you have to pull the conductors inside it. This comes pre-manufactured, pulled into it. Um, okay, so the armored cable, the, you're looking at armored cable. So, when it comes to flexibility, guys, you have two options. You can either, Adam, you can use flexible metallic conduit or you can use an MC cable. So if I want to tie to a machine, I have two options. I either from the disconnect to the machine with this and then pull conductors through it, or I can bring an MC cable or an AC cable and from the disconnect into the machine. Lighting fixture is notoriously famous of that, guys. We, they use, we use a lot of MC cable and AC, typically MC cable to tie at the fixture work, fixture work. Um, so 
flexible metallic or non-metallic conduit also can be used as a fixture web, but most likely the MC cable will be a better better conduit for it. Any comments, any questions guys about the use of the flexible metallic conduit, flexible metallic conduit? The, the main reason for using that guy is tying to electrical equipment as in air handling units, chillers, uh, rooftop units, um, fans, pumps, uh, lighting fixtures, what else? Did they forget anything, uh, Derek? Um, any electrical equipment, any electrical equipment that powered with electricity. You're looking at it right here, guys. You're looking, can you guys see how your flexible metallic conduit goes from the last disconnect? There's different ways of doing it, guys. Typically from a junction box. And look, you can see it. You can do it from devices or junction boxes all the way to the electrical equipment. So that's your flex. Um, liquid tight flexible metallic conduit. Uh, the liquid again the liquid tight is just they make it liquid tight they design it in a way where it, it, it uh, seals the the inside of the conduit from water there are different types that you can use guys type a b and c and they have different fittings and what's not for different application but the most important thing you need to know about it without without getting into the details of liquid tight flexible this is not liquid tight this is not this is flexible the liquid tight they have a cover on it it uh, it, it seals it from water basically why? Because we can use it in different uh, location. Now, uh, liquid, tight, flexible, non-metallic conduit. The non-metallic conduit, guys, is it's the liquid, tight, flexible, metallic. It's metallic with a cover or a jacket right at the top of it. Uh, liquid, tight, flexible, non-metallic conduit. The whole conduit is made from non-metallic material. So, Adam, if you have a location, where would I use something like this? If I have a location that's highly corrosive environment, highly corrosive environment, a lot of rusting, um, that would be a good application for non-metallic conduit, flexible or non-flexible, flexible or non-flexible. I want to remind you guys, with a flexible metallic conduit, Karen, you need to pull an equipment running conductor. Brand, when you tie this one to the air handling unit, you have to pull an equipment ground conductor. Though the shield um, or the, the shell of that conduit qualifies as an equipment ground conductor with very limitation. But if, if, it's, if it's supposed to absorb vibration, we do not want to depend on the flexible metallic conduit as an equipment ground conductor. As an equipment ground conductor. Okay, then these are the conduits that you're going to be using this for the most part in uh, above ground. EMT conduit, to your, your conduit of choice, rigid or intermediate only for severe physical protection and hazardous location, class one and class two. Then, they, then you got yourself the cables. The cables, there are two cables. One cable, guys, is called MC cable. You're looking at it right here, gentlemen. You're looking at an MC cable right here, hospital grade MC cable. And there's um, an M, I'm sorry, MC cable and there's an AC cable, MC and AC cable. They look alike. MC cable is preferred over AC cable because, Derek, it has a insulated neutral. Okay, we have insulated ground right here. They have a green insulated ground. So a lot of engineering firms, guys, like Michelle Cooley Erickson and what's not, and others, when they specify, they specify an MC cable. An MC cable. Everybody understand that? MC cable. We have a comparison between the two. They look alike. MC cable is more durable, have fully insulated conductor versus AC cable has a little aluminum wire that comes with it with the shield act as an equipment ground conductor. Okay, if you are underground, and I have a couple of tables I want to show you guys in a second between the two. Now, when would you use PVC conduit? PVC is non-metallic conduit. PVC conduit is your conduit of choice, guys, in two locations. If you're underground or if you're in a, in a severe, um, um, if, or if, you, if you're a highly corrosive environment. If you have a highly corrosive environment or in a wet location, underground, especially underground, your PVC conduit with your conduit of choice. So, Derek, they come to you and they say, we're going to design what conduit system should we use? Your question would be, are you guys underground? Yep, PVC. Are, is this... Uh, a toxic area like a wastewater treatment plant, for example, a lot of chemicals they use there. If you put rigid steel, they rust. They don't last long. So what would you do? You do PVC conduit. PVC has two types, guys. Type number one is 40. 
and tile number two, of course, this area, as you know, the difference is the thickness of the uh, of the wall of them. For uh, eighty, will qualify to protect you from severe phys uh, from physical protection, severe physical protection. So, which one should I use? If you're in an area highly corrosive and there's also moving equipment in it machines and what's not you use the rigid the, the uh, pvc schedule 80. if you're underground you could use pvc schedule 40 or 80. so the difference is the thickness the more more durable more stronger uh, material they use solvent type cement guys to tie these equipments and uh, uh, to tie the connectors and it comes with different types of fittings and what's not boxes all the boxes and the fittings have to be specialized for it conduit fittings and boxes if you have PVC conduit, guys, it comes with PVC boxes, PVC connectors, PVC couplings, and the, it's a whole wiring method, complete wiring method. <clears throat> okay, and so that's your PVC. When would you use a PVC? I want to hear two words, guys. Number one, underground, highly corrosive environment. Underground, highly corrosive environment. That's when PVC becomes the perfect application. Now, Adam, can you wire this? room here with pvc yep would that be the best wiring method no why because you have two options for a room like this emt typically if you're exposed look at these but these are exposed emt looks nicer if you are not exposed like above the ceiling you have two options emt or or mc cable that's typically what you have the most commonly two options that you can use did you guys hear me now, would I use uh, EM uh, PVC here? Can I use by code? Yes. Should I use? No. Where would I use it? Underground, highly corrosive environment, and underground. There's something called ENT, guys. ENT, I call it the ear, nose, and throat doctor. Anybody ever heard it this way? When I teach that furniture, I call them ENT. This conduit is non metallic. This is the only application for this conduit is highly corrosive environment. You get into an area with a lot of chemicals, and if you put a, a cable, anything steel uh it will rust completely rust so what they use guys they use these conduits they're pliable easy to bend they use them in barns sometimes in highly corrosive barns and um, um and, and what's not so any place that has a lot of chemicals um that that's another conduit of choice for you they can be coiled or reels that's how they come they don't come in, in foot sections and what's not and the sizes are, they're limited though to a two inch size. See, they don't go four inches. They're, to, so they're supposed to be guys for brand circuits um, and uh, feeders, not typically for brand circuits. That's what the, what the building for. You can encase them in concrete. You can put them in concrete, also another, another uh, conduit. When I, when I teach apprenticeship, uh, Derek, I always tell them, if you don't know anything about these 60 some wire methods in an EC code book, no one thing. There's 60 some wiring methods. If you're highly corrosive or underground, you need non metallic. That's a conduit of choice. So your, your choices are PVC, or there's a couple of other two conduits you can use. If you are above ground in a dry location, you have multiple options, but your main thing is anything metallic work and non metallic work, but perfectly the metallic. So that's these are the flexible, the, then there's flexible, non flexible. Where do I use the flexible conduits? Metallic, non-metallic, what's not? You use them if you tie to equipment. That's all. That's the, if the division between all these. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Anything you hear non-metallic, always think protection from highly corrosive environment, corrosion, or wet location. Different type of it, guys. If you if you are to install it, you have different type of, of, of methods of doing it. Um, you can use the solvent cement with these with these wire methods. Uh, they have boxes that goes with them, and and um, want to see the boxes, PVC, and mud box. So they they can they can interchange the boxes with for PVC and ENT can be interchanged <clears throat> between these two wire methods. Now, the, the rest is we did it, guys. Sizing the raceways, we talked about sizing raceways, depend upon the number of conductors, the cross section area, and how much you can fill of these conduits. You guys did that with me. Wireways and auxiliary wireways, the same with the same thing. Are you going to fill 20% of this wireway? Typically, guys, we fill a wireway is a channel that you can typically open 
you're looking at these right in front of you. Here's a wireway. That is a wireway. You can open the cover for them. They're called wireways. Um, a good application for wireways, guys, is schools typically. You can pull wires and, and have access to these wires. Okay. We talked about the cross-sectional. You guys are familiar with the cross-sectional area. We, we talked about this one. Um, and then PM is going to the voltage. So when you pull conductors through a conduit, guys, make sure you pull. You don't want to have high impedance for the circuit or voltage drop issues. So, um, and there's something called inductive reactance for the, for the circuit. So long story short, to summarize, when you have a conduit like this, Adam, all the conductors, the phases, the neutral, and the ground of every circuit must be grouped together in the same conduit or cable. By doing it this way, guys, you minimize two things. Inductive heat, you, you eliminate the inductive heat, right? Heating the conduit, and you also minimize or uh, minimize the voltage drop problem. Minimize the voltage drop problem. Cancel it. Okay, this is a couple of consideration, guys. Um, when you put conductors in a conduit, you have to take into consideration, of course, the length for voltage drop. You might have the temperature because you might have to derate, derating because of temperature, derating conductors, and you guys did some derating with your friend Chad. There's also voltage drop issues with the length. Um, so that's basically the, the, the most important thing, the length because of voltage drop in here. Um, surface width, width, okay, so that's, that's what you need to do. Um, Insulated grounding and bonding conductor. A lot of equipment, guys, for feeders, the, the EMT qualifies as an equipment ground conductor, except we pull also on feeders. We recommend pulling an equipment ground conductor with it, especially with bigger feeders, um, because it, it enhances and improves the reliability of your equipment grounding system, equipment grounding system. Conduits, Adam, as you tie this conduit to a box, they have a bonding bushing that bonds the conduit to the box. And if you guys were an electrician, we go into deeper into what type of bonding bushings and what's not, and when do you need a bonding bushing and when you don't need the bonding bushings. So there is a, that's what we call it methods and materials. Um, so, so be aware that as you tie the conduit to the box, you have to bond the conduit to the box. Either you can use lock knots or you can use connectors with lock knots, or you can use bonding bushings, depending upon the situation that you're encountering and the voltage. And I have a, a couple of pictures for these. <clears throat> OK, then with the conduits, guys, come different type of boxes that we can use. Um, and we talked about box devices and sizing the box devices that you can use. If you have a device box, um, I don't have a device box here, but you can make this one. If you have a device boxes, they come in different depth um, for your equipment. Okay, so building projects usually. So now you're getting into the material. Typically, if you're a project manager and doing takeoff, um, uh, like you're going to be Derek, you're going to pay a lot of attention to these different type of boxes that you can run in the conduits. Um, from device boxes into junction boxes into masonry boxes and what's not. When you land your conduits or cable into a box, you have the code requires you guys to mount the box. You have to support the box with some exceptions. Um, masonry boxes will be supported through the, the wall. There's handy boxes that can be used also um, without extension covers. There's, the most common ones you're going to be using guys the square boxes like these and you put an adapter can you see the adapter here with a, a square box like this one in a device so a lot of these square boxes commonly used to have an adapter there's octagonal boxes that use for typically lighting fixtures um square boxes wide square boxes used to give you more room if you're doing junction boxes and what's not and box size i'm going to spare you guys doing some box size calculation because we went through that one uh, before I'm just going to review that one for you. <clears throat> um, if you have unused openings in your uh, wiring methods, you are supposed to 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 block it, right? Because you don't want the bugs and what's not to get into your wiring methods and create the shorts and ground faults. Um, box fill, guys. We talked about these two tables, and I'm not going to go over it one more time. If your conductors all the same. You use this table. 
when your conductors are different or you have devices, you're going to be referring to uh, 314.16 A and B. Um, a and B. So you're going to be using the A as well as the B when the conductors are different, different sizes. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Derek, Karen, this is just a quick review, guys, of the box film that we did, and I know we did it, and I tested you on it. When you do box film calculation, uh, contain two devices, duplex. When you have a device, guys, it counts as two. Um, this is just an example of a box that they're doing a box calculation. Uh, I have a, a rule selecting the box and what's not. Box depth. Box depth and width of a box, guys, you got to be careful because some dimmers, dimmers, and GFCI are big, so you might have to go to a deeper box or a wider box because the device is bigger. The device is wider or deeper, wider or deeper than normal. So you might have to go to a bigger box than that. There's blaster ring they add to the box, and we'll talk about the pull box in a few seconds. Power distribution of pull box. Okay, so that's all we're going to do, guys. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, pictures here. And then I'm going to do a box fill calculation. Let me go over here in a second. Okay. Um, this is, um, they call them running threads. You don't need to know this one. If you're an electrician and you're doing wiring, you cannot use a running thread as a connector. Running threads as a connector because have you guys used them? I don't know if you guys use them or not. But if you have a running thread that keeps going on both sides, it can't lock in one location. So you don't want to do that one um, on a connector. So that's, um, let's go back. Bending conduits. This is the conduit that they use guys for typically in the EMT and you can use it up to two, uh, two quarter, um, a three quarter of an inch rigid, but as well, and I think they go up to two inch EMT conduit and three quarter of an inch rigid on these connectors, hand benders. Um, this is how your conduit system is going to be coming from underground. This is your, con can you just see the word PVC? Now, Karen, you're coming from underground to a switch gear. Do you use EMT? Can you use EMT? Yes. Should you use EMT? No. Can you use rigid? Yes. Should you use EMT? Rigid? No. PVC. And as you enter, you have to seal it. The code requires you guys to seal for feeders and grant circuits for grand circuits or, or uh, services. You seal as you enter the box. Every time, Adam, every time you go underground, your conduit of choice is going to be what? PVC. Even though you can use anything else. Did you guys hear me? For my project, the, your project that you guys did, I, the, what did I tell you about the underground? PVC, Schedule 80, the best. You go above ground, what's the best? The best of the EMT, the best and the most economical, EMT. So that's my conductor. Um, flexible. Here's a picture, guys. This is um, this. You can flexible metallic conduit, typically tied to equipment, either with a fitting or with a box or what's not. So you're going to tie it directly to the equipment. That's um, that's the the major application for this. Here's a couple of applications for it. Um, one more time, flexible. Every time I tell you guys flexible, you're dealing with. Um, the flexibility, here's the flexibility kind of type of equipment. You all, all, almost, almost always you have to put an equipment grounded conductor. Can you guys see that ground equipment grounded conductor? So when you try to the equipment, I know you guys are not electricians, but you are designers, you're going to be a project managers. As you inspect your job, you go to a machine, they're pulling the three phase to the machine. Where's the equipment ground conductor? They're going to tell you, well, that wire is an equipment ground conductor, yes, but it doesn't qualify if it's have vibration, right? Does it qualify here because that can vibrate? For a lighting fixture, for example, Adam, it does qualify because does this fixture vibrate? Not really, not a whole lot. But you have an air handling unit or a chiller that rotates. That can vibrate. This to absorb the vibration, you put the flex in with, if it vibrates, it will compromise the integrity of the equipment ground conductor. You are to pull an equipment ground conductor right with this, with this piece. Even though for, there's a limitation for up to 20 amp over conviction device and six feet, you don't have to that. That's only for fixtures though, not for equipment. 
for fixtures, not for equipment. When you put PVC guys outside, what happened in Minnesota when we go from minus 25 into 102 sometimes, is it 100 or so? What happened to that conduit which in, in the winter and the summer goes between that variation of temperature? What do you think is going to happen? Expand and contract, expand and contract. Now, what happens if you don't accommodate for the expanding and contraction? What's going to happen to the conduit? It's going to be pulled aside, and one day you're going to find your conduit this way. You're going to find find the conduit here, one side, and in between the wires sitting like this, exposed wires, right? It will pull apart. So this, huh? You don't see a problem with that? <laughs> I had an electrical contractor say, Chad, that's called job security for us. They call us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the code with the code, guys, is about safety. So the NEC code will require you to have this expansion fitting. This expansion fitting, believe it or not, <clears throat> they put this one in the in one side of the conduit, and it allows it allows the conduit to move. It allows the conduit to move the piston. Anyway, so when you have outside uh, runs, especially with PVC conduit, you have to put an expansion fitting, guys, and we can size them appropriately. So pay attention to it. Here's the flexible non-metallic conduit, guys. Completely not flexible non-metallic. Completely non-metallic. Um, always get confused between them and um, and the other ones. Uh, okay. So for highly corrosive environment, like I said, this is uh, electrical non-metallic. No, I'm sorry. This is ENT. ENT. Where would you use the system? Anybody install this? I don't think we did it here. This is highly corrosive environment. You get it to an area where a lot of chemicals, it eats into steel, and you want everything, boxes, everything to be non-metallic. They use this wiring methods. I want to remind you guys, there's some 60 plus wiring methods in NEC code book for different applications. That's one of them. Support of your conduits and what's not. Uh, equipment voltage drop when you group all when you group all your conductors together guys you have to pay attention to the inductive heat that's why we group them all together and the voltage drop adam when you attach your conduit to the box this happened to be threaded conduits <clears throat> you have lock nuts one here and one here and there's a reducer um so that's one way of attaching a threaded conduit into a box you have connectors guys also um Different type of devices that you can use with them, with covers, and typically around. So here's your, uh, you have your um, your boxes as well as the um, the mud rings and what's not to put your devices in. The <clears throat> goal. We did the box fill calculation, guys. But when you have a mud ring um, or a blaster ring, oops. When you have your mud ring or blaster ring. Okay, where am I here? Okay. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, when you have a plaster ring or your, so you add the cubic inches like you guys have done with your friend Chad, you add the cubic inches of that ring as well as the box in order to, to come up with the total cubic inches that you can fill, the total cubic inches that you can fill. So that's that one. Um, this is guys, um, Grounding the boxes, you have to pay a lot of attention to grounding the boxes. You can see the fittings that they use to ground the boxes, um, as as well as um, the boxes that count and what's not count when it comes to the box fill calculation. I need to do some calculation, guys, about this particular example. I'll get back to it when we have pull boxes uh, and devices boxes. Okay, so these are different type of fittings that we use, different type of... Um, you know, with EMT fittings and stops and what's not. So anyway, so these are, here's your MC cable. I'm going to go all the way to the MC cable uh, with different type of fittings. If you're an electrician, you are supposed to know a lot of these. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit, guys, to this. This is comparing MC cable and AC cable. I told you MC cable is the, the cable of, of choice when it comes to the engineers, guys. It has a fully insulated equipment current conductor, more reliable. Why would you use an AC cable? It's cheaper. Um, I always bring two, two things, um, Adam, when it comes to AC MC cable. You can buy an MC cable as feeders. Look at that. You can go all the way up to 200,000, I mean 2,000 uh, KCM, 
uh, AC cable, guys, is limited to number one. Limited to number one. Um, MC cable, you can use 75 degree column for ampicity, and this one is typically limited to 60 degree column for ampicity, 60 degree, so you can use up to 75 degree for these cables. So that becomes the preferred way, way of wiring. Uh, equipment ground conductor, both of them guys provide equipment ground conductor. Um, the MC cable is more reliable. Color coding has more color coding for MC cable than uh, AC cable. So these are a few things uh, that makes MC cable um, your basically cable of, of choice when it comes to um, a couple of insulation, guys. Okay, insulation. Um, MC cable and AC cable, typically they are a dry location. You are supposed to put them in a dry location. Though MC cable can, you buy a version of MC cable that you can install in a damp or wet location or direct bury. Does that make sense, Adam? So you can MC cable if you want to. You can buy it in a in a in a um, in a type that you can bury. But typically they are dry location. Okay, oversized neutral typically AC cable. So this, can you guys assure me that you're gonna look at these one? Um, I can tell you, being engineers and designers, you're going to be using MC cable for the most part. But you're going to be in a project, uh, Derek, when you work for them and they say, you know what, it's cheaper to use an AC cable in this. So be aware that AC cable is an option too, um, especially for contractor. They like it. I always call AC cable, guys, is Romex, commercial Romex. You have a, a strip mall, a, a little shop that you wire, and you can't use Romex um, in it. AC cable would be your conduit of choice. An engineered project, you will be using an MC cable. You're looking at an MC cable with insulated uh, and neutral net. Okay, so that's a few things, guys, about AC voltages. The voltages, guys, AC cable can go all the way up to 600 volt. MC cable um, can go higher than that, can medium voltage. Look at that. You can buy up to 35K. Uh, cable doesn't mean much to you guys, but it becomes a big deal for the support guys. You need um, AC cable is like Chromex. You support it every four and a half feet and every one foot from every box. AC cable not more than six feet and of course one foot from every box. So it talks about the support for them. Different type of connectors, different type of armor, um, and that's basically it. Uh, again. Can you guys assure me that you will look at this table, comparing the two together? I can tell you what I want you to know. If you're doing an engineering job, MC cable. Why? More reliable equipment ground conductor, bigger, better system. You can get it in bigger sizes. So there's a lot of advantages for it. Cool. Both of them have an equipment ground conductor. The MC cable has an insulated equipment ground conductor, more reliable system. Okay, so that's comparing the two together. We talked about conduit fill, guys, so I'm not going to bother you with conduit fill. You, you're you supposed to do some calculation with your friend Chad, though. Um, this is just talking about the conduit fill that we did. Uh, I am going, I can't rotate here. How can I rotate? Why don't uh, allow me? This is a table, guys. Can you, can you go, please? I can't tell. Can you go to page? I'm going to talk a little bit about this table and then I'll do my problem. This is comparing the three um, or a couple of conduits together. Where would that be? Chad. MC. Uh, raceways. Okay, this is in page in, in page 137, guys, and it compares. Why can't I flip it, Adam? I can't flip it. Okay. So anyway, it, you can see, guys, it, it compares EMT conduit. Now this one, Chad. Okay, now I go all the way to these. I think I cable conduit. Come on. Okay, here you go. So it compares different conduits. I would like you guys to look at this. If you look at the 
EMT, IMC, rigid, PVC, EMT, and flexible. They give you guys all the sizes. For example, ENT can go from half. All of them start at half. ENT stops at two, size two. Four for IMC, rigid goes to six. PVC go to six. And EMT and flex goes all the way to four. Uh, it tells you about the spacing, minimum spacing for support. Typically, uh, 10 feet for conduit, three feet for flexible conduits. Um, you support uh, uses not permitted and permitted, and we talked about these. So this will compare for the, the three of them. I want to summarize it in one word. If you're indoor dry location EMT, your conduit of choice, you support every three feet from every box, every 10 feet in between. And um, that's your EMT, the, the, your EMT conduit. If you are underground, your PVC conduit is your conduit of choice. If you're doing flex, if you're tying to equipment, you're doing flex. Dry location, flexible metallic conduit. Wet location, you're going to use liquid tight, flexible uh, metallic or non-metallic conduits. Any comments, guys? Any questions about comparing these uh, conduits together? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? If you guys are staying in this industry, that's what that's what we do. You're going to be specifying EMT conduit and pulling wires inside it like this. And cables. Any comments? Any questions? Comments? Questions? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys five minutes, and I really need to do an example about pull box because we have not done pull box calculation. So I'm going to take an example about pull box calculation. So do me a favor. Let's have uh, five minutes and then we'll do a pull box circulation. <laughs> 